Hi everyone! It's great to see you again today. Oh, and where is our Christian hero going to be found today? Yes, we're going to find out about another Christian hero and she is from England. I've been to England before. I've been seeing Big Ben. Wow, yeah, there's lots of things to see in England. Let's find out more about our Christian hero. I can't wait to find out. Let's find out. Susanna sat in her house. The fire was lit, it was lovely and warm, and she was so thankful to have this house to live in. She was so thankful to have a roof over her head. She was soon going to have another baby. And while she was so thankful to have a house to live in, Susanna struggled. That day, she knew she had very little food in her cupboards. Her other children would be so hungry when it came to dinner time, and every day she struggled to have enough food to feed them. You see, Susanna and her husband Samuel, they were very poor. And no matter what they did, they never seemed to be able to get ahead. They never seemed to be able to get out of debt. They were always struggling to have food on the table. About 10 years before this, in 1697, Susanna and her husband Samuel had moved to Epworth. Epworth is in Lincolnshire on the east coast of England. They had moved there hoping to have a fresh start hoping that their life would get better, that things would get better, that they would have a little bit more money. But that wasn't the case. They were still in debt. Samuel was a minister of a local church and very often he would have to go on trips away and this cost money. They tried to grow their own vegetables and their own potatoes and again very often these vegetables and potatoes would die and they wouldn't even have that as food. And they had so many children to feed. Susanna didn't mind being poor. Yes, it was a struggle. But what annoyed her more than anything was when people criticised Samuel, when they said that he wasn't a good father, he wasn't a good husband, because he wasn't able to give them what they needed. He wasn't able to provide for all of their needs as a family. And yes, their house was small. They had many children. They didn't have much. They very often didn't have very much food. But Susanna was content. She knew God. She loved God. Her happiness came from knowing God, from knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as her saviour. She was content and happy and she prayed that her children would know that same happiness that she knew, that they too would know the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. This baby that would soon be born was actually baby number 19 for Susanna and Samuel. That's a lot of children, isn't it? There were times when she was very sick, when she was very weak, when she was tired. Nine of her children had already died. They had died as babies or as very, very young children. You see, in those days, there wasn't the medicine that we have today. There wasn't the hospitals that we have today. Very often when a baby or a young child would get sick, they would die. And this was very hard for Susanna. It was heartbreaking. She loved all of her children and she missed those children that had passed away. But she knew that they were in heaven. She knew that they were with God. She knew that every child was a gift from God. And she knew that God had a special plan and purpose for each of her children. Just as God has a special plan and purpose for you, for your life. Suddenly, as Susanna was standing in the kitchen, the door was flung open. It was Hetty. It was one of her daughters. She came in and she was crying and she was so upset. And Susanna said to her, Hetty, what is it? Hetty was sobbing and crying and she said, it's father. They've taken him again. Who's taken him? Susanna said. They've arrested him and they've said that they've put him in jail because he's in debt again. Susanna took a deep breath and as she was close to her daughter now, she was stroking her head. She was trying to comfort her. This wasn't the first time that her husband Samuel had been taken to the debtor's prison. Unless someone would send money to the prison to get him out, he would have to stay there and work his way out until his debt was paid. Her other children now peeped their head around the kitchen door. They were curious to find out what was going on. Hetty said to her mother, can they really take him away? Are we really so poor? Susanna answered her daughter honestly. Yes, Hetty, we are that poor. We really have no money. And yes, they can take him away. They can put him into prison. Hetty was still so upset. She couldn't understand this. Why are we so poor? Why is it that God has allowed this to happen to us? What have we done to deserve this? 
She had all of these questions. Susanna looked at Hetty and she said this. Look, it doesn't matter where we are or what is going on around us. God is enough. Trust in his goodness. God has good plans. He is in control. You must trust in his love and in his goodness. Now stop crying. Dry your tears. There's nothing more we can do until we hear back from your father. Suddenly, Susanna felt the strong urge to pray. She knew that they were in trouble again and she knew that she needed to pray and talk to God about it. She needed to pray and ask God for his help. Susanna sat on a stool. She threw her apron over her head and she began to pray. She did this very often and her children knew that whenever she had the apron over her head, they knew not to disturb her because they knew that she was talking to God. Susanna would spend at least two hours a day praying and talking to God. As Susanna began to pray, she felt discouraged and her heart was heavy. She was afraid. What was going to happen this time? But as she prayed, she knew that God was in control. She began to feel more content and at peace because she knew that she could trust God to work all of this out. In every battle she faced, she knew that she could bring it to God and she knew that God would hear and answer her prayer. She was praying for her children, praying that their faith in God would be strengthened, that they would not be discouraged by what was happening around them, but they would continue to trust in God despite all of the problems. Susanna was praying for God's wisdom and God's peace. And as she was praying, she felt that she knew God's peace in her heart. She knew that God would work everything out. God would carry them through. And after a few weeks, Samuel was released from the debtor's prison. Many of their friends had come along and had paid some of the debt off. And now he was once again free. But there was still trouble ahead. One night in their home when everyone was sleeping, Susanna just sat up bolt upright in the bed. She knew that something was wrong. But what had woke her up? As she sat there, she could hear Hetty's voice. She was shouting loudly and urgently. And then she could smell it. What could she smell? It was smoke. Something was burning. Susanna stumbled out of her bed. As they opened the door, there was thick smoke and the flames of fire were licking up round the door and round the roof. Samuel shouted, quick, quick, we need to get out now. There was no time to get anything, no time to gather anything up. All Susanna could think about was the children and she was soon going to have this baby and she knew there was no way that she would be able to get the children. So she shouted for Betty, Betty, quick, please go and get the children from the nursery. Susanna ran downstairs and as she opened the door, the wind blew and it blew the flames towards her. She tried at least three times to run through the flames, to get through the front door, to get outside. Each time Susanna ran back in, but she knew that she needed to get outside. And so it was now the fourth time and Susanna gathered up her clothes and she knew she needed to get out and she ran through the flames. She could feel the heat of the flames scorching her legs and her face, but she knew she needed to get out. She pushed on through the fire and she got out through the front door, out into the yard. The air hit her in the face. She'd made it. But as she looked around the yard, frantically she was searching to see where everyone else was. Where were her children? She couldn't see them anywhere at all. She began to scream. What was going to happen next? What are you worried about now? Trying to figure it out now. God knows right where you are now. You know it's all in his hands now. Because he cares for you. Always cares for you.
Susanna was panicking. She ran around the side of the house and then she ran into the garden and then suddenly she could see her children all huddled together a short distance from the house. She was so glad to see that they were safe. She ran over to them and she said, where's your father? As she gathered them into her arms. Her second youngest child, Patty, pointed to the house. He was still in the house. As they gazed at the house, Samuel came running out of the house, coughing and spluttering. He was gasping for air. It's no use. John is trapped in the nursery. There's no way that we can get to him. Susanna began to cry. This was terrible. John was still in the nursery. It was breaking her heart. How would they be able to leave him in this fire? They couldn't do that. By this time, several men from the town had come up to help them. As they stood watching the house, suddenly they could hear this voice. It was John. He was up in the window of the nursery and they could hear him shouting and somehow he'd managed to climb into the windowsill and break the window. Quickly, one of the men shouted, let's see if we can get him from outside. They had no ladder, but they decided that they would try and they would get him. And so they lifted one man up and he was able to grab John from the window and they brought him down safely. Susanna was so relieved. John had been rescued and she was so thankful to God. Just as John was rescued from the window, suddenly there was a loud crashing noise and the roof of the nursery fell in and the whole house just went up in flames. She said that he was like a brand plucked from the burning. A few seconds later and John could have been dead. But Susanna knew that God had his hand upon John's life. And she prayed especially for John that God would use him in an amazing way. The Wesley family stood there and they watched their whole house burn up in flames. What were they going to do now? Where were they going to live? In the weeks that followed, they began to build a new house. This house would be bigger and it would be much stronger. And while they were building this new house, Susanna gave birth to her last child. It was a little girl and they called her Kezia. All of Susanna's children were now living with different friends and different family members. And she missed them. She really missed them all being together. Within a year, they were able to move into their new house. But of course, they were still in debt again. They were still poor and they still didn't have much money. Susanna was just so glad that after nearly a year, she was able to move into her home and bring all of her children with her. Susanna was just so glad to have the whole family back together again. To be able to sit together at the table, to sit around the fire, to read from the Bible, to sing songs. She was so thankful that they were just together again as a family. Susanna didn't want them to be lazy and so she gave them chores and jobs to do around the house. Maybe your mum gives you lots of jobs to do around the house too. Susanna decided that she would spend at least one hour a week alone with each of her children and in that time she would just talk to them and she would discuss with them different things about God, different things that they would be learning from the Bible. These special times were times that she really treasured she really loved her children and she really wanted them to love God and to serve him too. The children didn't go to school, but Susanna would teach them from her home. And so in their house, they would go to class every day and she would be their teacher as well as their mum. One day, Charles was sitting, gazing out through the window. Charles, please pay attention, Susanna said. Charles was always drifting off, dreaming, looking out through the window. He really wasn't that fussed about all this schoolwork at all. Very often he would be looking at the clock, counting down to when school time would end. He just wanted to go outside and he wanted to play. Charles knew that for him to be able to go out and play, he needed to do his schoolwork. And so he would sit down and he would concentrate and he would do exactly as he was told to do. Then when it was finished, he was free and he would go out and he would have great fun with his brothers and sisters. When the children were really good, she would often praise them. She would encourage them. She would say, that's brilliant. Well done for being so good. Every day they would read from the Bible and they would sing together. When they were singing, Susanna noticed that Charles had this beautiful voice. They were poor and they couldn't afford to have any musical instruments. But she could see that he was really musical, that he loved music. She often wondered how God would use this gift in his life in the future. Susanna was faithful and she would keep on praying and teaching her children until they all grew up, until they all left home. Some of them got married. Susanna and Samuel were left on their own. But one day Samuel had a very serious accident and he fell from his carriage and he died. 
When Samuel died, Susanna was left in debt and she was left with absolutely no money at all. This forced Susanna to leave her home and she knew that she needed to trust God. Over the next seven years, she would go and she would live with her children. She would spend a little bit of time with each one of them in each one of their homes. As Susanna got older, she would write letters. All of her children were now grown up, but she would write to each one of them, giving them spiritual advice and encouraging them to keep following God. Susanna spent time studying God's word and praying. She would talk to God. She would pray for many people, including her children. More than anything, she wanted each of her children to put God first in their life. Susanna would also get lots of letters back in the post. All of her children would write back to her, and this was how she kept in touch with them. Charles and John had both become preachers, and so they travelled a lot. Susanna really missed them, and she really wanted to visit them, but this was difficult, as they were always travelling about. Charles settled in Bristol, and Susanna was able to go and visit him. When she spent time with him, she was just so encouraged. She knew that God was really blessing him, and that God was using him in an amazing way. God was blessing them in ways that she had never imagined. John also had a church in Bristol, and soon it was Susanna's turn to go and to visit him. She was so blessed and so encouraged to hear him preach as well. He then moved to London to a place called the Foundry. This was a factory and he used it as a meeting house and many, many people came to hear him preach. Up to this point, Susanna had always been in the Church of England. She'd always went to that church. This church often spoke about how it was so important to do good things to get to heaven. But John and Charles preached a different message. They preached that it was only because of Jesus. It's only because of Jesus' death and his resurrection that anyone can be saved, that anyone can go to heaven to live with God forever. They preached this message in the power of the Holy Spirit and many, many people trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to be their saviour. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 says this. Listen carefully as I read it to you from the Bible. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. Hearing this truth from the Bible fills Susanna's heart with joy. But she realised that her salvation, that means having her sins forgiven, didn't depend on anything she did, but that it was only through Christ, it was only because of the Lord Jesus, that she could have her sins forgiven. There is no other way into heaven, only through Jesus. She was so thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ was her saviour. When Susanna was older, she asked her children that when she would die, that they would just simply sing a psalm. Susanna died at the age of 73, and that's exactly what her children did. They sang a psalm of praise. They praised and they worshipped God together. Many years later, John found himself at her graveside. He was so thankful to God that she had been his mother. As he looked back over his childhood, he was so thankful for those times that she read to them from the Bible, that she taught them about God, that she encouraged them to sing and to worship God, to praise him. She spent hours in prayer, praying for each and every one of them. He was so thankful to God for the godly mother that she was. All that she ever wanted in her life was to serve God. And that's exactly what she wanted for each of her children. She wanted them to put God first no matter what. John's church, which was called the Foundry in London, was replaced by a much bigger church. God poured out his Holy Spirit and there was a great revival. Many, many, many people trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour and there were many, many new churches started. These churches were called the Methodist churches. John Wesley had become the leader of the Methodist church and they preached the truth that is found in God's word, the Bible. In his lifetime, John Wesley preached over 40,000 sermons. He travelled all over the country, preaching and sharing the good news of the gospel to many. Many, many people trusted in Jesus as their saviour. Charles Wesley wrote over 6,000 hymns. Many of them are sung in churches today. One of them is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You maybe sing that at Christmas time. Susanna Wesley was now in heaven. She was rejoicing with Jesus, her saviour, and she was in the presence of God. She had had a hard life. She endured many trials. She had much heartache. 
There were times of great pain, great sorrow. There were times of great poverty. But Susanna had been faithful to God. She trusted in God at all times. John had often remembered his mother saying these words. I am content to fill a little space if God is glorified. It didn't matter where Susanna Wesley was. She knew that in her home, teaching her children, in that little space, if she did it to God's glory, that he would bless her. And she continued to pray for them all of the time. She encouraged them. In her little space, in her home, she glorified God. You might think to yourself, she doesn't seem like much of a Christian hero. But she was. She was a Christian hero for God because she loved God and she obeyed him and she put him first in her life. And because she did that, many people were blessed. Sometimes Christian heroes can be the people that you don't even think of. You too can be a Christian hero by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ to be your saviour and by putting him first in your life. Where God has put you, he will use you for his glory. You too can be a Christian hero for God just where you are. She had so many problems in her life. That's right, Charlie. Susanna Wesley went through so many difficult times and hard times in her life. But overall, she learned to trust God. You know, if you're going through a hard time, God wants you to trust him every day. Susanna Wesley was a Christian hero in her own home. And this was what God asked for each one of us that we would just would be faithful to him, that we would pray, that we would read God's word and trust in God every day. And God can do amazing things in your family, just the same way as he did in Susanna Wesley's family. Thank you for tuning in today. Come back soon and we'll hear more about other Christian heroes. Bye. Bye.